All right, team, welcome back into the lead generation masterclass. If you missed the previous masterclasses, you already know you have to go back and watch them because those are the building blocks into what we're going to be talking about today, which is LinkedIn lead generation. Okay. And we're talking simply the outbound system today. And quick warning, okay, this does not work without the organic building blocks that we talked about in the last series. So make sure you guys go back and at a minimum, you should watch the organic side because you have to run the organic and the outbound in tandem. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about Sales Navigator today. And this is simply the tool that we use to send connection requests to qualified prospects and message them at scale. We use it just like a CRM. And so if you're not familiar with Sales Navigator, I would highly recommend to get familiar with it. Play around inside of there. There's a lot of cool tools and features and I'll show you some of those today. So the first thing that we're going to be doing inside of this outbound strategy is actually setting up kind of like a CRM system or what we call a leads list. And there's six basic lead lists that we're going to set up. The first one's gonna be called connection request sent. Second one's gonna be called exclusions. Three is gonna be message sent. Four, responded. Five is gonna be in mail sent. And then lastly, six is going to be follow up. And the one that I'm not gonna go too in depth on today is actually gonna be the exclusions one. That's just people that are showing up in our search results, but we don't necessarily want them there. Example, like current clients. So if you have like a current client, you want to put them in your exclusion list because chances are you don't want to send them an outbound uh, because they're already a client. So with that being said, how do we create a leads list? Well, really simply put here in the top right hand corner of sales navigator, you'll see that there's this create leads list. And that's where you're going to set up all of the, the lead lists that we just talked about. So you're going to set those up first. Okay. And this is kind of what it looks like. Create the lead list. You can add a description if you want uh, for, for whatever reason that you would want a description, but you're going to name the lead list at a minimum. From there, we have to understand our saved searches. Okay. So that's going to be the second point, setting up your saved searches. And this is where the day-to-day -day work actually happens of you sending out connection requests, sending out messages, sending out in mails. Okay. And there's three main lists that we need to set up. Okay. So right now we've set up our lead list and then there's three save searches that we have to set, set up before we start sending messages. Okay. Now the A list is going to be our connection request sent. And these are people who we've sent our connection requests to, but we're awaiting a response. Our B list is going to be send message. Okay. Those are people who have accepted our connection requests and we need to send them our initial outreach. And then our third save list is simply going to be our send in mail people who haven't connected with us that we can directly DM anyway. And this is really good for say, uh, people that haven't connected with you quite yet and you want to be able to send them a message anyway. So, and here's the thing is in mails are limited, so we can't send like infinite amount of these, uh, but you can get a certain amount of credits when you get sales navigator. Now that we have a grasp of understanding the saved searches side, we're going to go down here and we're going to go into setting up our filter criteria. Now this is really going to be the first step and we're going to circle back to the saved list here in a second, but we're going to go ahead and set up our filter criteria. Now, these are filters that you must apply in order to reach the people that you're trying to reach your ideal client profile. So the filters that we're going to apply here, the first one is going to be under the company window. Okay. So company, you might be looking for people that are self-employed one to 10 headcount, 11 to 50, whatever size business that you typically work with. That's what we're going to put as far as the company headcount. From there, on the personal side, we're going to go for second and third degree connections only because we are looking for people that you're not connected with yet. Because if you're already connected with them, you can send them a, a message directly. So we're looking for people who are not connected with yet. And then you could add in some geography there. If you're just US based, you could put US. If you're looking for UK, Canada, whatever it is, you can put the geography there. And then from there, we're looking for industry. So for us, we look for advertising services, marketing services, business consulting, and uh, business consulting and services, online audio and video media. Those are the types of businesses that we typically work with. You're going to plug in your ideal industry there. Okay. And once again, we want these prospects to be cold. So make sure you do not have first degree uh, connections selected. Otherwise you're going to get a bunch of people that you're already connected with. From there, we'll go into the personal tab. The personal tab, we're looking for usually decision makers. So depending on the titles that you're normally talking to, it could be anything from phone, uh, founder, owner, CEO, it could be CMO, right? So whatever job title that you're specifically looking for, you're going to go ahead and plug in there. And then lastly, years in the position, uh, you could do less than one year, but typically we want uh, one to two years, three to five years, six to 10 years. It's a really good uh, 
search criteria to make sure you plug in. And then from there, we need to do this next one. It's so important. It's going to be the spotlights, okay? Putting the spotlights in the search criteria of posted on LinkedIn in 30 days will ensure that who you are messaging is actually active on the platform. So make sure that this one is highlighted because otherwise you're going to get a bunch of people that might not be active on the platform. And we're going to waste time sending connection requests that people are that are inactive. And then lastly, the workflow segment. Okay, we're going to remove contacted people. Yeah, uh, because at the end of the day, once we contact someone, we don't want them inside of the lead list because we don't want to send them multiple messages. And then the last part here is that the saved leads and accounts. Uh, you want to make sure all my saved leads are selected. Yeah. Uh, and then make sure you have this uh, criteria selected because this will filter people out that you've already connected with. If you don't do this, you're going to be sending messages to people that you're already connected with. Okay, or I'm sorry, you're going to be finding people that you're already connected with. So make sure that you guys have that filtered down on this workflow here. That way, uh, you're not doubling down on people. This now moves us into our list. Okay, so we talked about setting up leads list. This moves us into our A list, which is going to be connection request sent connection request sent and when you guys pull up your lead list and when you have that criteria this is what it's going to look like okay we got tom holly beck michelle all on top uh, uh in order here and we can go and send a connection request directly to them okay now when we go to send the uh the invitation we're going to do two things here and usually when we send the connection request the saved as lead is automatically selected if for some reason it's not make sure you guys save it as a lead and then send the invitation we don't include any personal messages we're just going to connect directly with them. Now, if you want to include a message, you can, but typically what we find that works best is that we just don't send a message, we connect with them, and chances are people will just connect with you if you're in a similar industry to them, okay? Now, once you send your connection request, we need to save that prospect to your A-list, okay? This is going to be our connection request sent list, okay? And so I sent one over here to Mr. Tom Harvey. What's up, Tom, if you're watching this? And uh, I saved him to the connection request list, and then from here, we can also bulk save. So you'll notice in this uh, in this list that there's little check boxes at the very top. There are uh, there's the ability to check all of these people. Now, I like to comb through here and make sure that we're not just bulk sending to everyone. Um, but if they aren't a good fit, just add them to your exclusion list, and then just comb through, and then you can bulk send connection requests to everyone. And then from there, if you want to add a little bit extra search criteria, you can use this thing called a Boolean search. Uh, and these are words that have to show up somewhere in their profile. So for us, we always have marketing and agency inside of the profile because chances are people own a marketing agency or uh, something along those lines. And so we want to have that inside of the profile before we do any outreach. So when you guys are doing your Boolean search, you need to make sure that you have one parentheses around your search criteria, and then you need quotations around your search criteria too. So just kind of look at how we have it set up here with marketing. Okay, marketing is in quotations and agency is in quotations. And then all of that is in parentheses. It's kind of weird, but it's how you have to do it inside of Sales Navigator. So once we have our connection request sent list set up, and once we start sending these connection requests, people are going to start connecting with you. And then you'll have the ability to actually send them messages directly to their inbox without using any in-mail. So if you're not going to use Sales Navigator, if you're not going to pay for in-mail credits, then uh, you could still utilize this strategy. You'll just have to do it without some of the search criteria. Now, with that being said, the B list send message, okay, you need to apply new filters for this list, especially for people that we want to send messages to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do the inverse of what we set up for our A list, which is going to be setting up first degree connections. So these are people that we are connected with, and then we can start uh, sending them connection requests from there. Now, the second criteria that we're looking at here is people you interact with. So we want to remove contacted people. So once again, once we contact them, we want them out of this list because chances are we do not want to uh, send them an initial message again. And then uh, we're going to save leads and accounts to all my saved leads. So those are two pieces of criteria that you want to make sure that you have selected there. And then from that point, we're going to create another saved list and it's going to be called messages sent. And add the prospects to this list after sending your initial message. So once we send that initial message, we're going to save to this list of message sent. That way we can track all the people that we've sent messages to. So that's our A list and our B list. Now there's gonna be some people that do not accept your connection request that still fall into your ideal client profile. Now, what we're gonna do for those people is we're actually going to 
put them in a C list, okay? Or use a C list, which is going to be send in mail. This is for when we run out of connection requests because chances are if you're using 20, 25 a day, you'll hit the capacity that LinkedIn lets you. I don't know exactly what the number is, but uh, normally what we find is 20, 25 per day. You'll be running out by the end of the week. But it has very similar criteria to our A-list. The only thing that we might change is years in the current position, but these are people that we are going to send in-mails directly to. And so when you go to send the in-mail and you're just gonna hit the three little dot menu here uh, in the top right, and then you'll have the ability to actually send them an in-mail without sending a connection request, which is ideal because once again, we're gonna run out of one connection request and then not everyone is going to accept our connection request either. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna be sending in-mails instead of connection requests. And we're going to use the premium credits to send those emails when we run out of connection requests. But make sure you do the connection requests first because those are all free. And then anything after that is a little bonus. All right. And that's going to move us over into sending messages. So we don't want to overcomplicate this. The whole goal of us sending message is just to elicit response. We just want to start a conversation. That way we can continue the conversation and try to book them on a call. Now there's two types of messaging that we work through, direct messaging and indirect messaging. Direct messaging is just simply a compelling case on why someone would want to speak with us in the first place. A great example of this would be, does your brand have enough creative to test? This can yield a yes or no response, and normally it's kind of like a close-ended question. And so as you can see here, the script that we utilize is, hey, I know this is random, and this is for Joanna. So Joanna, I know this is random, but you seem like the best person to reach out for this. I'm looking to chat with a few more agency owners looking to scale up in 2023, my name is Josh. I'm an agency owner with a background in media buying. I sold my first agency in 2019, and now I help agencies scale through one-on-one -on -one guidance, off sales, retention, and hiring. If you're open to it, I'd love to find 10 to 15 minutes, learn more about your agency, see if it could be a potential fit to help you scale, plus give you a few ideas. Feel free to find a time that works best for you. We drop our booking link. And the worst case scenario, this is the ultimate line at the end. Worst case scenario, I'll share a few things that have been working really well for other agencies with a similar model to yours. And then we just do a sign off. So this yields a yes or no, and we get a lot of no's from this, but here's the thing is sometimes we land in the right inbox at the right time. And that's the whole idea behind outbound is that we're sending a mass amount of volume to land in the right inbox at the right time. But let's break down the script a little bit more here because I want to make sure that you guys can customize this based off of what your offer is. So this first line really works for everyone. I know this is random, but you seem like the best person to reach out for this. It's definitely a different first line than most people send. It kind of gets the head turning. Um, and then I'm looking to chat with a few more. Just insert your uh, ideal client profile there. So if it's brand owners, if it's uh, you know someone in the lead gen niche, okay, great. Plug that in there. Looking to scale up in 2024, okay? My name is Josh. I'm an agency owner. Give a little bit of your background, your experience, how you've helped people grow. And then from there, if you'd be open to it, I'd love to find 10 to 15 minutes, learn a little bit more about your business, see if we could help, and then give you a few ideas. Okay. We drop the booking link, and then this last line, so important to make sure that you guys include this, worst case scenario. I'll share a few things that have been working really well for other agencies with a similar model to yours. Okay. And so that last line there just kind of piques that curiosity, and we book a lot of calls simply from this message. We get a lot of no's, but also we get quite a few yeses on booking calls from this strategy. So try that out. If that isn't working for you guys, you could try more of an indirect approach, okay? This is what we consider open-ended questions to elicit a response and continue the conversation. So essentially, an example of this would be like, I was curious, what does your creative strategy look like for Q4? This uh, really can't get a yes or no response. Um, that, you know, they could respond with, hey, I don't have time to answer this. But uh, really, if someone is going to respond to you, then they're going to give you a more in-depth response than just a yes or a no. So you can still use the same opening line here of like, hey, I know this is random, but you seem like the best person to reach out for this. It's a really good opening line for any of our outbound. Uh, it just gets good response rates overall. Uh, and then you could do something like a case study. Okay, and we've done this one before as well, where I'm doing some research into where other agencies are focusing their time and effort in Q4. I'll be sharing a write-up slash analysis with everyone who is kind enough to take a moment and respond. What is your primary focus for Q4? Okay. So you can ask a more open-ended question. You can relate it back to a case study that you're putting together. You could share some of the results with them if they're kind enough to respond. That's going to elicit, one, what they're working on. So chances are some of the problems or challenges that they're trying to overcome, where the business is currently at. So it just opens the dialogue. And that's the whole point of our outbound is just open dialogue, elicit a response. Okay, And whether you're using a direct or indirect response, just know uh, that the direct gets you to a yes or no faster than an indirect will. 
indirect. You have to do some nurturing. You have to continue up with the follow-up conversation. So if you have the time, I would probably lean into more of the indirect because you're going to elicit more responses. But if you're looking for a system to kind of set up, automate, pass off to a VA, then a direct response message is going to be either a yes or no answer. And you can just pump volume and just get more yeses. So if you're looking for more of a fast play, go with the direct message route. If you're looking for a little bit more of a long-term play where you're continuing to nurture people long-term, that indirect messaging does work really well on getting initial responses. So what happens when you are dealing with some of the positive responses from your outbound? Well, dealing with positive responses on the direct messaging side, well, that's just going to get you a booked call. Okay, If you're following up on the indirect side and you're wanting to try and book a call with someone from it, um, you can use something similar to what my partner here, Nicholas, used, which was, I've been hearing a, a lot of similar focuses uh, lately. I'll be compiling all the replies over the next coming weeks, excited to share them with you, but I couldn't help but mentioned, uh, but generating consistent sales is actually one of the major things I had to focus on when scaling my first agency. If you'd be open to it, I'd love to find 10 to 15 minutes to learn more about uh, each other and share a few ideas that help me. Feel free to find a time uh, that works best for you, drop the uh, booking link, and then check it out. Worst case scenario, I'll share a few ideas that have been working really well for other agencies with a similar model to yours. So once again, we're dealing with the positive reply. We're using a very similar framework on dealing with that response when the time is right to actually drop that message. Okay. Now dealing with negative replies, we just move on. Okay. People spend time like trying to convince people on messages after they say, no, I don't, you know, I'm not interested. Then just move on to your next one. Okay. They're not interested. You're not going to change their mind through a DM. So just move on. And then this is what the daily workflow should look like. You need to send 20 connection requests per day minimum. Sometimes you can do 25, uh, but essentially until you run out for the week. From there, you're going to send messages to connections, as many as possible. So as many as people will connect with you, you're going to send messages to those people because they're in your ICP. And then send 10 in-mails per day okay, until your credits run out. And then set these as recurring tasks inside your project management software. And remember, this is about consistency. So be prepared to pivot messaging test new messaging, okay? Shake it up a little bit, okay? Not all messaging is created equal for all offers. So make sure you guys are actually being marketers and test some new messaging. Now, I've included a LinkedIn cold outreach standard operating procedure here uh, for you guys. So if you want to pass this off to a VA and not have to worry about it, great. You could do, send this to your virtual assistant. You could send it to your, uh, to your EA, whoever. Okay, you could download that here 100% for free. Uh, and you guys can get this SOP rolling with your team, and then you don't even have to worry about it. Okay? One of the biggest complaints that we have about outbound is like, oh, Josh, like it takes time to send messages out. Yeah, it does. Uh, you could probably find some software too to automatically send them, but I like a little personal touch in there. Uh, we have VAs run this for us, so if you want our SOP on the VA side, yeah, you can download that uh, inside of the Miro board. All right, crew, so that wraps us up for the LinkedIn lead generation part two on the outbound side. Please leave a like on the video, make sure you share it with someone, and then subscribe to the channel because we drop these lead generation uh, tactics all the time. We'll have a few more coming out here in the near future. So if you guys are enjoying the master classes, let us know in the comments. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.